Hey everyone, how are you? I'm excited to be kicking off this 2019 with a brand new show sponsor. Very excited to welcome Joseph Meyer Club to the show. If you haven't heard about Joseph Meyer Club, head on over to josephmeyerclub.com right now and check it out. This uh, They have a great product, uh, this aftershave that I've been using. And it's uh, it's really comes in a nice container, and it's got uh, this foaming tip on it, just a little bit in your hand, and it's really it's nice and clean. You know, if you ever used the uh, liquid ones before, you can kind of make a mess, but this is real clean and really easy to use, and smells awesome too. That's a really nice thing about it. Uh, so, let alone is it moisturizing and uh, and alcohol based, so it helps heal up your skin if you happen to. Uh, have any you know nicks and stuff but smells great too and uh right now to let you try it they're gonna let you uh get 20 percent off if right for all my uh rock paper podcast listeners so at checkout mention rpp jmc20 for 20 percent off uh again rpp jmc20 at josephmeyerclub.com and there's always free shipping so keep that in mind and uh yeah tell them shane sent you Hey everybody, Shane Presley here with Rock Paper Podcast. Let me tell you about my friends at Naked Vine, located at 1624 Clarkson Road in Chesterfield, Missouri, serving up all your favorite wine, whiskey, tequila, and local craft beers. Swing by and visit them this weekend, February 1st. One of my personal favorites, Cluster Pluck, is back at Naked Vine. Um, And then on February 2nd, Melody Den will be out there on Saturday night, so... uh, Mark your calendar for those shows. Full events and details can be found at NakedVine.net. And uh, mark your calendar also February 12th. I return to Naked Vine with my singer-songwriter storytelling showcase. Bringing along my good friends Ryan Chaney, Matt Hall, and Gabe Stroop. And that'll be a $5 cover, 7 o'clock show. Do not miss out on that one. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. Can't wait to see you guys there. Uh, again, everything at nakedvine.net. Be sure to follow along with them on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And uh, yeah, get out and support local live music. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the show. Um, the podcast is kind of like a, it's like a radio show that's not on the radio. It's on it's on the internet. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> that's also like my mom. <laughs> uh, it makes it sound more confusing, doesn't it? Uh, it sounds like this. This is LL Manny, and you're listening to the Rock Paper Podcast. Hey everybody, Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast, coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri, hanging out today with LL Manny. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. This is uh, this is cool. I'm excited to be here. I'm uh, this what's fun is like we've kind of known each other. A while now. Yeah, it's been uh, like what, two, three years now. Some, some like that, yeah. uh, which was kind of fun, like because we we met uh, at work and then uh, we kind of got to. I guess it was somewhere in there. Somebody said something about you uh, you rapping, and uh, and I was like, I had no idea. And I'm like, and then I, I think I remember hearing. Um, what, uh, uh, Fuego. Esta uh, Fuego. Yeah, Esta Fuego. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I remember hearing that, and like it started taking notice. But it's like it's crazy to see already, like what a you know, like a year later or something, like that the, the progression you've made already and stuff. And thank you, thank and you. So, so it's really cool to see already the the growth that's uh, happening. But uh, I just saw uh, anyway. I'm glad that we got introduced then, and now we could actually hang out and talk about what you're up to and stuff. So yeah, uh, something I really care about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it's uh that's what's kind of fun about this uh you know just the networking and stuff you never know where you're gonna meet some people and what and the people that come into your life and what's gonna what they're gonna you know bring to you and stuff and but uh anyway I just thought that was kind of fun but uh, I wanted to know I wanted to get to know a little more about oh Manny because we've been like I said we've been friendly for a while but we never really get to chance to really talk you know yeah. it's always like something crazy going on around when we were at work and stuff and working but, at a bar man. yeah all right but uh i guess uh you, you always, always growing up here in st louis or yes yeah, born and raised um i grew up in north city um on casuta Marcus. my family still has a home over there um just a little little girl from the north side 
I went to art schools. I uh, graduated from Central VPA High School. Um, that helped me expand my music. Um, then I went to Carlane, the middle school, um, which was pretty much my introduce, introduction to music outside of the church. So been around music all my life, been an inner city kid all my life. And now, I mean, just doing my thing, trying yeah. to take over my city with with music. There you go. So did you, was it, uh, did you start, did you perform in the church? Did you like singing or anything or? Yeah, I yeah. sang in the choir. Yeah. Um, I wasn't a lead vocalist or anything, but I did sing in the choir. Um, getting into uh, music outside of the church was really the, the the door opening for me. Um, going into high school, we had a studio. And originally, I was an engineer. And working sound boards, listening to different rappers come in, it's like, you know what, I'm gonna start rapping. Try it again. And I fell in love with it. Yeah. We, uh, was it where he was writing? Or like, we always had these rhymes or? Yeah, always. Yeah. I've always written music. Um, I freestyle battled in middle school uh, up until high school. It wasn't until high school that I started recording music and actually writing songs instead of, you know, just writing a couple of bars here and there, right. writing a rap. I actually started writing, you know, two, three verse chorus and a breakdown type things. And then I switched over into doing R&B um, songs in high school as well. So. Yeah, in high school I just started writing more and expanding, and now I'm 27 trying for music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love that, uh, just that whole uh, like freestyle kind of thing. Especially, I mean, I, obviously, I think like Eight Mile kind of put it on the on for like a national scale for a lot of people. Like, uh, kind of opened up that world a little bit. But like that, the battle rap stuff. But like, I just like that scene, like when like they're around the food truck. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, and they just start, you know, everybody kind of drops a couple of lines in there and stuff. And like, and uh, it was just kind of fun that just uh, they're all like kind of start freestyling, had a couple of lines that they, yeah, and stuff. So it's crazy though, because A Mile made it mainstream, but uh, URL and Smack TV had been doing underground sure. battle rap for years, oh, yeah, way before A Mile had even came about. Yeah, I just so think, it's well, just crazy it's how they popularized it and stuff, exactly. That, yeah, right, and it just took off from there, but it did open a lot of a lot of people's eyes to a different wave of rap, you know, right. a lot of people were getting back on YouTube and searching URL and Smack and Queen of the Ring, so more people were getting that, that notice in the platform that they deserve, because there's some hard battle rappers, they can't make songs, yeah. <laughs> they're good at making songs, but battle rapping, yeah, yeah so they deserve the spotlight too. For sure. Uh, well, we, uh, so, so you, uh, you mentioned though, you started like, uh, as an engineer and stuff, like, that's kind of what I was wondering too, like, Getting into this, like a lot of the hip hop too, and, and uh, is the beats and different things and stuff. So it's like I was wondering if you get in, how much you, input you have into all, a lot of that. Like, do you get into the production side, or do you do you have people like uh, pitching you ideas for beats? You know, or do you listen to a lot of different stuff? Or man, I do listen to a lot of different sounds, but I'm very hands on when it comes to my music. Um, every beat that I've released a song on um i've been in the studio to help construct those beats or i've given the producer um lyrics or just some bars of um, the inspiration that i'm feeling and they'll construct around that will work and take out what i don't like add some suggestion sounds and then we we got a beat yeah. but i'm not that great behind the computer anymore i'm not super technical i can just tell you what to do <laughs> and hopefully you'll deliver but usually my uh, production staff, like, we're, we're eye to eye. We're pretty good with communicating, so they usually understand what I mean. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah I'm very hands-on. Yeah. I, uh, it's a, an interesting world. I, I Like, I think it would be fun to kind of get into some of that. Like, to, I don't know. I, I, I'm more, I'm definitely more of a, I, I respond to lyrics more than, than beats, I think. Like, but if it's a good beat, I mean, definitely gonna make you move and stuff. But like, right. but that's where I, I kind of focus on more of the the lyrics and stuff, and more. That's just my personal take. But some people like, especially like you look at current trends and and music today. It's all it's all based on the beats and stuff. And so no, you know, like you got the the mumble rap stuff and like and that kind of thing. Like, 
you can't you, you can't hear any of the words hardly. So it's the um, or the auto tune rapper. Right. Or but it's all so it just I mean I know it's all personal preference, but that's just that's my thing. But like uh, I think it'd be kind of fun to get into that world of making beats and pr- producing and stuff. And people people say it's always oh, so easy, it's so easy. I mean, if you have that kind of patience. <laughs> I don't huh. have that kind of patience, and it's a very tedious process. Sure. I've tried to make beats before. Didn't sound so great. Uh, yeah. Wasn't what I was looking for, so I just, yeah. I got some pretty good in-house producers, and I'm, yeah. I'm satisfied with that. It, maybe if it comes to me later on in life, but right now I'm so focused on the music, it's good to have other people filling other shoes. Sure. So. Let's uh, look, give them a little uh, sneak peek of what you've been up to. Um <sighs> Let's start with, uh, I guess, we'll, let's go chronologically. Let's start with uh, It's a Bop, right? <laughs> That's the, the the way to start off the show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anything you want to talk about this song? Um, it's a Bop is uh, probably my hottest single. Yeah. Um, All of this sauce. All of this sauce. All of this sauce that I'm dripping, I made that you should be sipping, little nigga. You could never have me, ah, fuck it, daddy. I am not your mammy, call me Big Manny. Yeah, yeah. Sauce, yeah, sauce, All of this sauce that I'm dripping. Don't let me catch you slipping, little bitch. Not with the drama, you don't want problems. Sign up your mama, she did it for commas. Sauce, 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 sauce. Yeah. My jeans are Japanese, yeah. PRPS, these are uh-huh. not guests direct My deposit, send me a text, no yeah, cash or checks yeah, yeah, Recognize yeah, talent, yeah. I do not flex You see me shining, wonder who that Unfriendly black hottie with a body You cannot sit with us, it must hurt to catch you up in your feelings But we just don't give a fuck From the slums, never bum, American nightmare Radical black and young, your bitch try to throw me some pussy and I ain't trying to catch nothing Only thing that I kill, please do not push me, make loose black something Say less and do way more, did way more and started charging for it Dripping sauce you niggas can't ignore All of this sauce that I'm dripping I made that you should be sipping, little nigga You could never have me, ah, fuck it, daddy I am not your mammy, call me Big Manny Sauce, sauce, All of this sauce that I'm dripping Don't let me catch you slipping, little bitch Not with the drama, you don't want problems Sign up your mama, she did it for commas Sauce, Rock and roll, shouldn't have gave you niggas money Yeah, yeah, we out of control Tell me something I don't know I do what I want, flirt with your nigga Fuck on your bitch, run up a check Smash out the whip, do the whole dashboard This is what you asked for, Super Sam Manny on the beat, Louisiana 500 degrees, ball of block and how I'm out In these streets, niggas don't want it, we playing for keeps Got a Modano with her own smoke Came with a Guetta with her own coke Brazil the Blanco with the trap moves Hot like Stella with her old grooves You show, right? Cocky like I'm the chosen one, the golden one. They dig the kids, still dripping. Come catch you some. All of this sauce that I'm dripping. I made that you should be sipping, little nigga. You could never have me. Ah, fuck it, daddy. I am not your mammy. Call me Big Manny. Sauce, 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 sauce. All of this sauce that I'm dripping. Don't let me catch you slipping, little bitch. Not with the drama. You don't want problems. Sign up your mama, she did it for commas. Sauce, sauce, sauce. I dropped that a year ago. Actually, we celebrated the anniversary of Isobop yesterday. Um, I dropped the video maybe seven months ago, but we released a single on all digital outlets on the 18th of January last year, and people received it very well. Um, it's just another, it's a single, you know, and that was the market I wanted to target, uh, the radio, but you'll still hear bars and lyrical ability on the song. Right. So it makes you want to search for other music. Sure. 
I think one of my favorite things about, uh, especially kind of getting into the uh, breaking down the lyrics and stuff, is like the especially in hip hop is uh, the references and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many like quick little drops in there. Uh, you said uh, something about uh, Stella. With her old groove or something. Yeah, like I, I like Stella with her old groove. Yeah, like stuff like that. Like <laughs> just always like there was a couple of lines that popped out and made me laugh and like just the thinking of those different references that you're applied in your lyrics and stuff. Yeah, my favorite is when I come into the second verse and I'm just like cash, drugs, rock and roll. Oh yeah. Like, it's just like uh, <laughs> you shouldn't have gave us money type yeah. thing. Like we out of control and we know it, but. Yeah. That's a what was a Chappelle show reference in there too. Exactly, right? yeah. Yeah. There's, a, there's a lot of references <laughs> in there. I refer to uh, Griselda Blanca as well. Like I have a lot of respect for her. Um, man, yeah. It's kind of, but that's like I'm like it's just kind of fun to break that down a little bit and kind of get some of those influences and you get to know a little bit more uh, of you and and them. I mean, I'm not that all that it's like biographical or you're writing mm -hmm. or whatever, but just like it's you can definitely tell like. You have to be a fan or something, or at least a, you know, aware of that kind of stuff to where if you're going to write about it and mm -hmm. things. So, it's just kind of fun to kind of get to know a little bit more about you through those songs and stuff too. So, in those lyrics, it's good to know people really listen. When, yeah, yeah, yeah. When people quote my lyrics, I'm like, oh, <laughs> you listen. Yeah, yeah. I actually, you know, the whole I, mean, I had a pretty good drive down here, so I listened to like everything out there and I watched all the videos and. Uh, it. So yeah, there's. Uh, so there is an, uh, a video like you mentioned uh, that's on your the YouTube channel. You can check that out and uh, hit subscribe and. Yes, it's a Bob does have a visual. We shot that down on the riverfront. Um, my buddy Lou Tribe Jig, he's a, a fellow musician as well, but he's also a videographer, very gifted videographer. He shot that video for me. Yeah, yeah, it looked real good. What's that? A gra graffiti. Mm -hmm. wall? We were down right on yeah on the graffiti wall right by like the sea turtles and all the fish. Mm -hmm. We were right there. Yeah. Just so one um, scene shot. That's all we wanted. Right. That's all you need. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's fun to have those. Like, I, I think uh, you kind of mentioned that pushing it as a single and that kind of that radio world. And that's kind of like, I feel like that's kind of the current trend with music today is like everybody, it's not really pushing the albums or and things it's more a video and a, and a single and stuff and mm -hmm. push it together and because we are such a visual you know based uh right now like we, where everything has to be have a visual with it like it's just how it goes like i don't know Cause especially with you know facebook and everything else like you just that's where everybody's consuming most yeah. of their media and so we have to have that visual to go with the songs and now and stuff yeah. right but, you know, starving artists like myself can't afford to put a visual out to sure. every track. So yeah. I made sure, just studying marketing, I wanted to drop visual, visuals to the songs that people would appeal to most first starting out. And from there, once I get build my own fan base, I'd just be able to put a visual with whatever song I dropped because I didn't want that song to get overlooked. Mm -hmm. So the marketing strategy changed from grabbing their attention to keeping their attention. So. Sure. Let's give them uh, another one. This is uh, probably my favorite, actually, is uh, 1117, <laughs> which is uh, completely different than it's about, like, mm -hmm. and which I, lo I love, too, that you keep, you keep showing different sides of what you can do and keep uh, showing range as an artist. And that... Uh, I'm a 
mess with your love Run it back, baby How could I forget? I know what I'm dealing with. I think I need another year. It's giving me faith. But we just yeah. Look at my lips. Make no sense. Baby, turn me on. You turn me on. You turn me on. But it's a great it's a great song and it's like but the the video is yeah we shot that here we shot it we shot it right here pretty pretty steamy music video there is. <laughs> it's crazy because um we shot the video uh shout out lakes the voice the guy vocalist who's featured on that track <clears throat> his flight got delayed in dallas couldn't make the video a buddy of mine um and creative director friend um malik mcclendon he showed up and absorbed the role caught on very quickly we shot the video it took us maybe like eight hours because me and malik were so tight and for us to shoot that scene it was pretty uncomfortable <laughs> and we kept laughing and laughing but we had a great time but um that is one of my favorite songs as well just because a lot of people do not know that i sing yeah and it was just a chance for me like yeah to keep showing different sides and, and my versatility well, that, uh yeah, Lakes, uh, the voice, I, that's the first I heard of him, and like, yeah, great. Uh, I really liked his uh, his voice a lot. And, um, but uh, yeah, like the video, like I said, uh, it was pretty steamy, and like, uh, but it was it was kind of fun too to see, you know, uh, kind of more of an acting role essentially. You know, it's like you're, it was more of a um, theatrical video. I directed that video yeah, myself. Nice. Uh, I wrote the script and directed that. So yeah, I was super proud. We released that at my release party last year on uh, May 27th, along with the tape. Even though that track wasn't on the tape, I just hit them with a lot of content that day. Mm -hmm. It turned out well. People received it very well. That's a lot of fan favorites. So. Yeah, yeah. It's, and then, like I said, I just love that you were you can sing on it and stuff. Like just keep keep evolving, keep showing them more stuff that you can do. And uh, but yeah, that that one really kind of caught my attention. I was like, I like this one a lot. And it's just it's just a smooth you know groove to it and all it just feel, feels good so i appreciate it yeah check that out again uh the video on youtube um and all that we can you can download that uh, digitally everywhere we yes. have uh um inst uh we got the spotify and itunes and uh, title apple all of that yeah amazon yeah wherever you're grabbing your music check that out i heart radio deezer all that guys all that <laughs> one all that <laughs> But we do, uh, you mentioned a couple of shows, uh, but we do have some stuff coming up uh, that we want you to come on out to. Um, on February 2nd, you are at Foo Bar for uh, Film Fest. Yes. This year, which is uh, it's going to be a huge day. Yes, shout out all the women hitting yeah. the stage. Film Fest is an all female uh, festival, it is the biggest <clears throat> female festival in the States. Um, Bates is. Uh, the headliner and she also orchestrated the event this is the fifth uh, event i'm super excited to be a part of it because it's my first year and yeah i'm on the main stage so i'm really excited about that um and, and her taking me under her wing and just being super cool and embracing me as a female hip-hop heavyweight 
Like I'm super excited to meet the other female artists. There's going to be people from DC, Atlanta, Chicago, and then of course the hometown representatives. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you said this will be, uh, you're bringing the full band? Yes, yes. I will be bringing my guitarist A minor, uh, my drummer E Euphoric, and I got a special DJ surprise. So Yeah, I said, and that's like, like I, I uh, I love it all, but like I love when when you can do it live like that with a full band. Like that just like takes it to the next level for me. Like locally, I like I'm a big fan of uh, Matthias and the Pirates, uh, and they do a lot of that full you know full band. I mean, so they do sometimes break it down to where it's just turntables, samples, and the two MCs, mm -hmm. but. As when you can get the drum kit and the guitars and everything going like it's just it's really fun to see that kind of and it and it's you know it may not sound like the record always like it's you know sometimes sounds a little different because you got you know it's all live but it's like it's fun to have that kind of a different like that different take on it too sometimes yeah, to me that's better just because i don't want you know if i'm coming to see you live i right. want a different show sure i could have listened to you rap over your mp3s at the house or it, if you're not going to give me that same energy i could have just stayed at home and listened to your music right give me a show yeah and that's something that i really have been study studying um and i got that experience especially working at the oyster bar just seeing the different uh type of crowds the different energy different performers how they would move about the stage and, yeah yeah i'm excited yeah, that's going to be so a big big night over at the food bar on February 2nd. So snacks and tickets, come on out, mm -hmm. see Manny uh, over there, and uh, a bunch of other great things. I, I don't yeah, even... we've got Bates, uh, a good friend of mine, Lethal the Poet, uh, another great friend of mine is in the Beat Battle of uh, Volume Speaks. Um, you've got Frankie Duop, uh, Simply BB, um, Jaleesa Renee, uh, Kid Honcho, there's just so many. There's over 50 acts, you right. know. Yeah, two stages all day long. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. going to be a fun fun one. The event starts at 5, and it doesn't end until 1. So, yeah, guys, come on out. Catch plenty of acts. Anybody under the age of 18, um, I believe they're shutting that down at 10 o'clock. Okay. So all ages are welcome until 10, 10 p.m. Right on. And then uh, another big one we got uh, coming up. Um, is on February 23rd, and this is the uh, Slum Fest uh, Awards. Right? Yes, yeah, the Slum Fest Music Awards. It got rescheduled because of the snow, but we're still super anxious to see who's winning. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, I don't, I don't know a whole lot about this. Uh, so, let's, can you, uh, like, how does that work? Did they just give you a call and say that you're nominated? Or? No, it was so crazy, um, because my friend Lethal. We follow each other on Instagram and she had posted a picture. She's like, oh, I'm nominated for best poet. And I'm so excited, so honored, this and this and that. I'm reading the caption. I'm typing like a congratulations, like, yo, congrats, that's super dope. Like you've earned it, you've been doing your thing. She's a therapeutic. She does open mics all across the city, poetic justice, um, lyrical therapy, things like that. And so I started searching the other categories. I'm like, oh, I wonder who's a, who else is up for nomination. Then I see the female categories. I'm like, wait a minute. Am I nominated for best female hip hop artist? I'm like, nah, that is my name. <laughs> so I searched the other categories and I'm like, wait a minute. I'm up for best female, I'm best new artist as well. And I just like dropped everything. I called my manager. He's like, oh my God, like we just started raving about it. And then next thing I know, my social media is just blowing up with like congratulations and him flooding the, the feed with uh, the nominations and letting everybody know and it was just crazy because I didn't know I think they just dropped a picture of yeah. the nominations and when we saw them when when everybody saw it like it just came from word of mouth so it was exciting yeah that's yeah that's super exciting for sure I I recently had a kind of a similar experience um, over the summer uh, St. Louis magazine mm -hmm. named the show best podcast in St. Louis oh really yeah, part of their uh, A-list awards they do every year. That's awesome. That's and, a huge honor. Yeah, so I'm like, but I was flattered. I was like, I had no idea. Like, uh, like I, I didn't, which was it was strange, the whole thing, kind of, because I kind of stumbled upon it the same way you did, was uh, a, like, I think they posted their awards on uh, Facebook before they before it went out to the, the print version of it. Mm -hmm. um, but... Uh, it was like on there and then like somebody tagged me like hey congratulations shane and i was like 
what? Oh, and I was like, <laughs> so I like started reading and I was like, this is insane. Like, how, how did I, how did I, how did I even get on their radar? Like, and stuff like, so it was pretty wild, but I, I was, uh, I was honored and like, I got to go to the awards party and stuff and like, yeah. you know, free food and drinks and all that. And it was, it was a good time. And you just never know who's watching. Yeah. That's the best thing about social media, man. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, that thing to get, you know, but that's that's been my thing is just keep hustling, like, you know, get somebody's attention, but, you know, that's kind of the goal, but, like, I'm not really doing it for the awards or whatever, but it's like, but it was nice to get that recognition and stuff, get a little pat on the back saying, hey, you're doing something, and, like, so the same thing with the, your, the Slum Awards here, like, to get uh, get somebody to say, hey, you're doing it, doing it right. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. It's crazy, though, because... I had been releasing music. I, I dropped Esta Fuego in October of 2017. Like, that was my first single. And then after that, January, May, March, like, I just kept dropping content. And I didn't get booked for anything. I didn't know anybody, really. I just kept just flooding the feed with music. Like, you guys are going to see this. You're going to see it. And I did a few open mics, dropped those videos on my fan page. And then out of nowhere, I started getting booked in December for shows. And then late December we get the or early December we get the nominations and I'm just like Yeah. What what like <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. Two thousand eighteen was weird. But good. it was a good weird. Right. Well but along with the uh the awards you will also be performing that evening as uh, as well on the twenty uh, yes. twenty third. Yes, yes. Make sure you guys come out. The show's um doors open at eight. Show show starts at nine and yours truly I am opening the show with one of my hit singles. I'm not going to tell you guys which one it is, but it is my one of my hottest records. Um, uh, shout out to James Coleman. Uh, those guys uh, came to me and asked me to perform at the award show, and I'm honored to be in the position. So I can't wait. Y'all not going to want to miss this. I do. If you haven't seen your girl live, you want to see your girl yeah. live because I do get wild. Yeah, I'm excited. I haven't been to a show yet. But I'm gonna, I'm excited to check it out. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm definitely going to come out to one of these uh, for sure. So. For sure. Uh, I think, um, yeah, isn't, uh, isn't John Harrington involved with that too? Yes, yes, yeah. John Harrington as well. Yeah. Him and uh, James Coleman, uh, they both uh, arranged to do the, the Slum Fest um, sure. arrangements and things like that. They also booked me for the Christmas show. Yeah. Super nice guys, super sweet. And yeah, friends, they, of, friends of the show with uh, Midwest, Midwest Avengers. Midwest Avengers, yeah. yeah. So. Yep. Uh, well, shout out to those guys. Check them out. If you haven't heard Midwest Avengers, you need to. They've got a show coming up uh, March 3rd at the Sheldon. So definitely check that out, too. Yeah, which is crazy. Like, that, uh, <laughs> you know, having... Like, Sheldon's just beautiful over there. Like, it's such a neat space. But, like, the, that they're bringing a bunch of hip-hop in there now and stuff, too. Like, it's... Super it's exciting. Cool. Yeah. He's, um, another rapper, Anthony Lucius, is performing that show with them as well in... I mean, that was just a huge honor. You yeah, know, so definitely. I'm excited. I went, uh, speaking of uh, that room, I was once over there for uh, Amos Lee. Mm -hmm. you know, do you know Amos at all? I do not. Oh, you should check us out. He's really good. And uh, he, there's, so he's playing full band and they're playing and like, it sounds great. And then uh, there was one moment where he just like, <clears throat> he just steps off mic and I mean, you could hear a pen drop in that room. It was so quiet. Everybody's like so engaged in the show. And he steps off mic and just sings out. And the way that room is like the acoustics in it is just like perfectly for because it used to be like an old speaking hall kind of thing. Like so that mm -hmm. before they had microphones and amplification and stuff. So like projection from yeah. The so he just sits there like singing out, and it's not like he was like screaming it or something, you know. But like it was just like such a cool moment, and like it was just so like it was really a neat room, and that's what makes me think of. Uh, when I think of that so like it's gonna be a fun night too so yeah big, check out uh, Midwest Avengers over there if you get a chance and, and that one's uh, March 3rd yeah. it got rescheduled too because of the weather yeah that uh, but we uh, let's drop in another one we got uh, Vibe On this is uh, your most uh, current uh, single right now right this yes brand, and one, brand of, new. one of my other favorites just because of the message behind the song but yeah Sheets, a beauty queen, finest thing you've ever seen. Curse, still a blessing. 
prize possession, diamond rings She's gotta watch her back, can't trust just anybody Observe and gather facts, these niggas for everybody Take the long way home, just to sleep alone D&D mode on her phone, so far gone She might not come back for a while Take some time to think about where she's been, where she's going No one from last year is still here, true colors are showing Already knowing, putting together pieces of a puzzle Forward with emotion Forward with the mo, dive deep, but slow stroking. Real eyes, real lies. Don't be surprised if she don't call you in the morning. Not a savage, just a firm believer in her passion. Patient, call her old fashioned killer. He'd rather play the field, stalk his prey, chill and wait, go in for the kill. Chosen compliments other niggas never notice, and appreciation taken for granted. So he stays focused, he stays focused. He'll find love, but there is no rush in this 2010s kind of world. We got no trust, it's a cold game, show the shrugs. It turns out he's just not that into you. Playing this cold game with a mind frame that everyone is expendable, not a savage. Just a firm believer in his passion, patient. Call him old fashioned killer. Just to get this perfect She's on a mission Flowing like the ocean Going with the motion Going with the motion Patience is a virtue She might hurt you Overwork you Overwork you Don't be wide open Just go With the motion With the motion Don't be wide open Just go I love that record. Um, I wrote it from a masculine and a feminine perspective, and as you can see in the first and second verse. And 2018, again, it was weird. Up and down with just dealing with different people, dating, um, situationships, not necessarily relationships, just coming across different people. Um, yeah, it was, it was weird. So in the visual, um, I'm kind of dating a girl, I'm kind of dating a guy, and like they're playing cards. And in the end, the last one of the last um, things that I say is play the hand you've been dealt, play the field, you know, and that that right there is just if people aren't moving the way you move or want the same things, then move on, vibe on, mm -hmm. you know, there's plenty of fish in the sea. We're just waving. That's all this is. It's just a vibe. Yeah. Catch it while it's still hot. And if it's not hot, drop off of it. Just keep it moving. Sure. Okay. I get that. Like there's a. Uh... Yeah, life's, my, that's one of my biggest things, uh, especially as I continue to get older and everything, but like life's just too short, you know, like I gotta, I live, like that's why I live the way I do, going to the concerts all the time and everything, like I might be tired, but I'm gonna go have a good time because I never know what tomorrow's gonna bring, so it's like, but yeah, just go out and have fun, like whatever it is, if you're not, if you're not, if it's not right, go on to the next one. Exactly. So, Especially in this generation. Another thing I say is um, in this 2010s kind of world, we got no trust. Um, he'll find love, but there's no rush. You know, Unfortunately, there's a lot of people that don't hold the same values as 
older relationships, you know, people were getting married in their early 20s, in their teens, and being together for 40, 50 years, you right. know. And it's just the time that we live in. People do not place the same value on relationships. So, you know, you just got to learn how to how to just distance yourself and not get so attached to situations. And that, that's just a song that I hope helps uplift people to just let things go mm -hmm. when it comes to relationships and situations like that. Just learn to let go because it, if it doesn't serve you, it's not for you. Right. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you write? I mean, is that like, uh, do you find a lot of the motivation to write from a lot of personal stuff? Like, oh, true. Uh, I write all my own music. Everything right. comes from experience. Yeah. Just, but just say something that maybe a date didn't go well and you just like that kind of, or something like that or whatever it is. And someone's that kind of thing inspires some of that or. I mean, yeah, it, it depends. I mean, last year I was dating, I dated a couple people last year, like maybe like two, three months at a time. So. They did a few different people throughout the year, and like, yeah, they helped influence different songs. Like, Vibe One was a collective of all of them. Like, mm -hmm, right. yeah, I just got to keep vibing. Sure. Not really messing with any of y'all. It's just, yeah, just experience, man. Like, mm -hmm. man, I'll walk outside and somebody will say something crazy to me, and I'll just like come up with something in my head. And yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Everything is inspiration. <clears throat> Do you, uh, for, for me, like, I, I've had a. Uh, like a kind of a bucket list I've talked about a lot but I got like sort of a bucket list kind of idea that to, to write it's just something I've been a big fan of songwriters for a long time and, and something I think about and, but it's like when I go to sit down to like think about writing or you know whatever it is like it's just everybody else's lyrics come out of my head because like it's all I, I listen to so much music so it's like do you I mean uh, do you find that like is it hard for you to come up with stuff or like that's not been said before like I mean no nah, not nah. really I mean nah no <laughs> <laughs> nah I mean, anytime I feel myself getting stuck though I'll listen to um, J. Cole because he's a great lyricist or Anita Baker just because she is so passionate and her vocal ability is amazing to me and so if I do get um, writer's block I have my go-to's and I, I'll snap out of it or just revisit the beat right. I try not to force songs I don't force myself but usually Nah. Yeah. I don't have problems getting content out. Just, sure. Just, I'm so inspired and I'm f fortunate enough to do this full time, so I'm around music all the time. So I'm always in the studio with someone, even if I'm not working on my project. I'm helping cr creatively develop an artist or just being behind the scenes and being on camera and, or just writing to someone else's beat right. and th they don't even know. It's just I'm inspired by it. So. No, I wouldn't say that I have problems. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I just, I mean, you know, even you, you, like you're saying, listen to J. Cole or whatever, you, there's a, you definitely pick up on some other the influences throughout that you mentioned, uh, some names throughout uh, some of the songs and stuff, and like, you pick up on some of that, but it's like, you know, you listen to so much of this music, like, it was just like, for me, like, that's when I just start going to everybody else's stuff when I, so that's hard, it's hard for me to shut that off, like, it's from personally it's crazy so. though because since i've been releasing music i have heard n newer songs from rappers and i've already released my project like last year and i'm like wait a minute i use that reference already oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's crazy because they're on a bigger platform but i mean right. it's not anything that's like too crazy where it's like oh you stole my <laughs> stole my bars you know it's something that's super common it's just funny to see to hear other people sure you know quote something that you used as a reference to yeah Yep, this is uh, it's kind of a tricky world today with it, and with so many uh, so many people being able, you know, having access to the, you know the internet and stuff. You get you have so many people putting music out and you know, be able to expose to so many different songs and stuff, and you can hear everybody else. I mean, we all have very similar influences, I'm sure. So there's gonna be a lot of that kind of stuff happening, but uh, we uh, so. I was going to mention, too, you mentioned your management, and uh, we wanted to give a shout-out to uh, Knox Entertainment, our, our, our buddy Alonzo uh, over there. And yes. Yes, my manager is Alonzo Townsend. He is the co-owner of Knox Entertainment. Um, great, great friend of mine. We built a friendship family bond pretty much before he um, took me on as an artist to manage, and I'm super grateful to have him. He's so helpful. There's a lot I don't know about this industry, but he does sure. and anything that i don't know i can go to or he'll 
stop before it even gets to that point and he'll coach me and teach me so i'm just grateful to have him he's yeah. a good guy he's a great guy yeah great great friend to have when we are you know meeting down there too like that's another one uh that you know so thankful that brought into my life just from uh working down there at the bar and stuff so yeah. uh having uh having him around and like just uh you know yeah, he's a very, very, uh, very good guy and and a big heart and, and and a hustler. So that's what for sure. Made. Shout out the Broadway Wish the Bar. Yeah. I got a lot of good gyms oh, yeah. <laughs> working down there. I mean, I got connected with you, got Alonzo, Marquise. Yeah. You know, so yeah. If you haven't been to the Broadway Wish the Bar, check that spot out. Definitely, <laughs> I uh, talk about it a lot, but I, I love it down there. And that, um, one thing I want to talk to you too about, like uh, just I uh, know more on your personal life, uh, you, you're uh, you're big into fitness. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a big big part of your uh, daily routine and stuff. Well, I was, is that uh, has that always been there too? I mean, has that always uh, been a? Um, I mean, I've always been an athlete. Yeah. Um, I just I was a lazy athlete though. Nutrition was terrible. Um, really, only trained for like basketball season, pretty lazy with that. After dropping out of college, um, I didn't want to play basketball anymore. Uh, I really didn't want to do anything. I stopped doing music too. And I got pretty, pretty big. I was about 250 and I wasn't healthy. I wasn't happy, super depressed. And um, was in a pretty, pretty sad relationship. I wouldn't say it was like bad. It was just like, it was just depressing, you know? So it wasn't healthy for me. So getting out of that relationship, I decided to really, really get involved with self-care. Dropped about 30 pounds. I was okay with that. Um, but I started getting into music and like like seriously getting into music is when I started recording and wanted to release singles and things like that. Got booked for a couple of modeling gigs and they were like, yeah, well we can put you in this, but we can't put you here because I didn't fit the look. and. It was a it was kind of discouraging just because I wasn't that big I just didn't fit you know the sample sizes and when I saw myself on camera it's just like yeah like I didn't want to look like that anymore so I jumped head first into nutrition in addition to the fitness that I had already uh, learned from being a college athlete and a high school athlete um, through nutrition in there and got certified as a personal trainer and took off from there yeah that's awesome I, it's I'm kind of right, like, I'm just now kind of starting that, like, I kind of, kind of where you were at, like, I was, got to probably my heaviest, and I was like, uh, I'm not happy here, I don't like this, and yeah. trying to make it, make a difference, and starting with, uh, breaking some bad habits, and starting to eat better, and, and, uh, cutting out a lot of the junk that I don't need, and, uh, That's great. so, I'm just now starting that journey, and, uh, so I guess why I kind of wanted to get into talking about it a little bit, like, so it's, it's, uh, it's inspiring to hear stories like yours that, you know, where you're so. making, making a difference in, in your life and stuff, and so I, I'm trying to do that myself, I'm trying to get on that, that right path, and, thank you, so. I mean, it also helps with just coping with things, you know, I'll go for a five mile run just because I imagine I'm running away from my problems. You know, I learn how to deal with them. Mm -hmm. You can't just respond to everything impulsively. So just going out for a work a run or doing a 20, 30 minute workout, you'll get that relief and you'll probably not even be upset or depressed or sad about whatever was keeping you down. You'll use other outlets to figure out what you want to do. You know, or use other resources instead of letting that certain thing affect your mental state. So, yeah. work the workout is definitely beneficial in many different ways. Yeah, you uh, uh you been watching any of that uh, Titan Games at all? Mm -mm, the no. Titan Games. It's, that? it's a new show The Rock put together on NBC, and it's like I don't know, like. It's, oh, like the um, gladiators. It's kind. It's kind of like that. Like, I, yeah. I think I heard about it. They were talking about it on uh, Daily News. Yeah, it's, he, he was about to start that, but I haven't caught it. It's pretty. I mean, it's entertaining, but like some of the people on there, are just like these. I mean, they're incredible athletes. Like, I remember, like they're, they're, they all come from different walks of life, which is kind of cool too. Like some people, firefighters, or uh, but some people are actually personal trainers. And this one girl came on, and she's a personal was posting videos like on Instagram of her doing her own training and stuff and then I, I guess something like she gets contacted from like 
Kim Kardashian wanted her to hire her to be her personal trainer and stuff oh, wow. or stuff. So like now she works for Kim Kardashian and stuff. So like it's social media, man. Yeah, yeah. It's like kind of crazy to think about how like uh, how that can happen. Um, it is great. I mean, yeah. I did just drop some new program, so yeah. Yeah. You might look for a personal there trainer. You go. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, make, give me a call. You yeah. know, music and fitness is my life. That's really all I do. Sure. That's uh, I think that's a really a, a good combination though. For sure. I mean, that's like the, because you always, everybody's always listening to the headphones at the gym too. So you know, it's like you gotta have music to, to work out to. So, exactly. You know, we'll help you out. Yeah, it is so inspiring to listen to my own music while I work out. Really? Call me a narcissist, whatever. <laughs> I don't even know how many times a day I listen to my project. Yeah. But I will. I, I listen to my project multiple times a day. I know first thing in the morning, like when I shower, or do my routine. Oh, I'm cutting on Push a Man or VNF or something. And of course, when I hit my workouts, I'm always playing music for my clients. They are always asking to hear Esta Fuego, so it's just it's super inspiring. Because mm-hmm. I do have that pump up music that makes you want to sure. go. So. I listen to my show a lot, uh, but more as a cri- cri- critical uh, kind of. I uh, critique myself a lot. I try to figure out how I, where I can improve, and what different things and that, that kind of stuff. So like, it's a little bit uh, obviously because it's more a, t- a totally different format. But mm-hmm. but like it's it, but I do uh, find myself listening to myself a lot. It took it took a while to get used to it, like because it's like it's weird to listen back to your own recordings, but. Sad. But uh, <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah, but it's like uh, when you when you when you become a fan of your own stuff, I think you must be doing you gotta be doing something right. And like so, uh, and that's how I feel like I can actually listen to myself and enjoy the show, and not think about like, oh man, I sound so dumb or whatever. <laughs> why, why did I say that and all yeah. stuff? So, uh, but now I get it. I, uh, like I said, I think and it probably helps too. Just like you know, like saying keeping keeping everything going, keeping all the thoughts coming and getting inspired to make more new stuff or whatever and absolutely so. I can't wait to I can't wait for later this year yeah yeah I just can't wait yeah well uh, we do uh, like I said everything is all, all that stuff's available we're, do, we're going into 2019 we're kicking this year off here uh, do you, you have some you got I mean, we got the awards already starting up here and stuff but like uh, is there some other big plans you got in the works uh, that you want to share or anything um, that, well you guys can definitely look forward to me headlining my own concert this year um Right now we're working out the details and working out the bookings, but um, you can't look forward to that. Um, also, me and a buddy of mine and my management, we're um, trying to set up uh, two separate tours. So LL Manny might be coming to a city near you really soon. So just stay posted uh, on what I have coming out. Just stay tuned. I'm all over the place. And well, in addition to my music, um, you're gonna catch me uh, Directed in a couple of videos. My name will be on a few projects just as di- a director or a creative director um, for photo shoots. I'm also a model, um, so I do work behind the camera as well. And yeah, I'm just expanding all over the creative industry, oh, yeah. man. <laughs> that's a, that's a, I think that's what it's all about. Like it's just, it's that hustle, you know. Like everybody's willing to you're, you're just willing to learn. You're willing to do whatever it takes, you know. If it takes being in front of the camera, behind the camera, whatever, you know, it's like, and I think just having all those different tools in your belt to, to be able to, like, that's kind of the modern take on everything now, like, as a DIY yeah. musician and artist and stuff, like, you got to learn how to do it all because, you know, figure out, no, but none of us have any money to pay people to do it, so. True, <laughs> so, you know, you know so we, if you want it done right, right, and, like, at this level, right. there's not that many people that we can rely on consistently to show up. So that's why I don't know my videos. You'll only see like a handful of people or like my photo shoots is usually just me. Because yeah. I just really don't even want to rely on people. Yeah. Because they don't want to pop out until you're on the main platform. Anyway. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, well, very cool. I'm excited uh, to see what happens for L. Manny in 2019. Thank you, thank you. Uh, you can get involved with on the socials, uh, the f- Facebook and Instagram. You can uh, download all this music digitally on your uh, wherever you're grabbing music today. And uh, again, come out to uh, Foo Bar on February 2nd mm-hmm. and the Bootleg in uh, the Grove on February 23rd. That is correct. And everything else will be on the uh, socials after that and keep an eye out for some more just keeping the headline date coming up soon so hopefully and 
Uh, but you said you wanted to close this out with a, you want to do a little a live one, right? Yeah, I can hit you guys with yeah. the with the piece. Yeah, give a little uh, sneak peek of uh, another uh, tune. Uh, I think this is fun. Like as uh, we did, we did this once before, and I was telling you about, and it turned out really well. Uh, but I, I like uh, offering, uh, being able to have you guys do this stuff live like this. It's just kind of it's fun, something a little different. So, I mean, yeah. I, l- I love it. It's my yeah. passion, man. So uh, I think I'm going to do VNF for you guys. That's m- my absolute favorite track, and I feel like it's slept on so hard by a lot of people, but yeah. they'll enjoy it after hearing it. Yeah. I'm just hard to get next to In love with these eyes, won't come down too late Now high off these vibes, I live in the sky Along for the ride, I'll make you come alive In this nightlife, from intellectual conversations Things we agree on, to debatable miscommunication Sex goes, talking karma sutra What I tried, didn't like, settle down for And had to get used to I'll pick your brain, this is sapiosex your head. Knowledge is power, there's power in pussy. Curse and a blessing, deadly weapon, conceal and carry. Please do not push me up these vibes. Fall in love with these eyes. Yeah, I live for the thrill. Don't get caught in your fear. You're smoking right, ride and roll. Yeah, yeah, go. Let's just flow, let's just flow. You get high off these vibes. Fall in love with these eyes. Yeah, I live for the thrill. Don't get caught in your fear. You're smoking right, ride and roll. Yeah, yeah, go. Let's just flow, let's just flow. If I'm driving, you rolling. We vibing and smoking. Super high me is super likely. Set your soul free, make you feel like flying. Fall in love with my mental. In love with this wordplay. Four, six sound waves. Dare to be gentle. In love with this wordplay. More energy flow. Got you emotional. You said I'll go. Keep it casual. When I wake up, roll over next to you. You need love. You need love. Sex is just what we do. Catching vibes, not feelings, rock waves like niggas chuck deuces with a middle finger. Fall in love with these eyes, yeah, I live for the thrill. Don't get caught in your field, smoking right, ride and roll. Yeah, yeah, go. Let's just flow, let's just flow. You get high off these vibes, fall in love with these eyes, yeah, I live for the thrill. Don't get caught in your field, smoking right. Ride and roll, yeah, yeah, go. Let's just flow, let's just flow. Ah. Rock, paper, podcast. Rock, paper, podcast. Rock, paper, podcast. Rock, paper, podcast. Well, yeah, that was it.